So friends, our next topic is ship construction under function 3. So let's begin with ship construction, some important definitions. Now, let's consider this as the ship. Now, the extreme end of the ship in the forward direction is called the forward end. This end is called the forward end. The extreme end of the ship in the aft is called the aft end. Okay. Now, this structure is called the stem. Stem or soft nose. Now the function of stem or soft nose is to help in cutting the water when the ship uh, runs uh, when the ship is underway it helps in cutting the water so that's the function of the stem this thing this portion what you see over here is the bulbous bow now the bulbous bow the function of bulbous bow is to reduce the drag and help in uh, speed increase in speed it helps in fuel efficiency and uh, what bulbous bow does is uh, it improvises the wave in such a way that it reduces drag so that's the function of uh, bulbous bow then comes the horizontal divisions of a ship now these horizontal divisions of a ship are called deck the topmost these are the these are called decks Okay, the vertical divisions of a ship are called bulkheads. So the vertical divisions as you can see over here, these are called bulkheads. Now this, the topmost, this I am talking about this deck, the topmost watertight continuous deck which runs throughout the length of the ship is called the weather deck. Weather deck, as it is exposed to weather, this is also known as the bulkhead deck. Bulkhead deck. Now see how the name comes. Bulkhead deck. This is uh, uh, the deck is called as bulkhead deck in passenger ships. Okay. Now, how does this name come? Now, decks, as we know, are the horizontal divisions. Bulkheads are vertical divisions. Now, the deck, uh, the topmost deck, where all the bulkheads meet up. Okay. All the watertight bulkheads meet up towards this deck, is known as the bulkhead deck. This deck, the topmost watertight continuous deck which runs throughout the length of the ship is called the bulkhead deck in cargo ships you call it as freeboard deck it is the same deck it is called as freeboard deck in uh, cargo ships bulkhead deck in passenger ships and you can call it weather deck in any of them then comes uh, shell plating. Shell plating is the outermost uh, skin of a ship. The outermost skin of the ship is called the shell plating. Now, the outermost shell, uh, the shell plating present at the side of a ship is called the side shell plating. The shell plating present at the bottom arc is called the bottom shell plating. Then. Uh, now, the centermost stake of this shell plating is called the keel. This is the centermost stake of the shell plating. Okay. This is called the keel. Now, keel is the strongest part of the ship. It is also called as the backbone of the ship. Okay. And uh, the numbering of the uh, stakes are done from the keel itself. Okay, the numbering and the naming. Okay, from keel outwards, you do the alphabetically uh, naming. 
and uh, numbering is done from half perpendicular in the forward direction that is uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 and in the half to the half perpendicular you do negative numbering okay so that is how the naming and numbering of the uh, stakes are done then uh, uh, this is your uh, uh, rudder this is the propeller so rudder is used to change the course of action and propeller is used to propel the ship in the forward direction or in the aft direction so that's about propeller you also have uh, both thrusters present now both thrusters Now these help in the sh ship to go in outward ship direction okay that is your port side or the starboard side so both thrusters are used in order to get the ship in the uh, to move the ship in the outward ship direction okay so in case where your uh, both thrusters are working uh, properly and efficiently uh, you need not require tugs to berth your ship so that is where both thrusters will help now you can see most of the cruise ships as well as cargo ships nowadays uh, uh, come with both thrusters. So let's on, uh, move on to further definitions. Okay. Let's consider this as the water line. Let's take this as the accommodation. Okay. Now, the water line at the fully loaded condition in summer is called the summer load line. So, the water line at the fully loaded condition in summer is called the summer load line so the water line at the fully loaded condition in winter is called the winter load line the water line at the fully loaded condition in tropical is called the tropical load line so this, these are the basic definitions for your load lines then uh, coming to half perpendicular and forward perpen perpendicular the definition is as follows now this line the perpendicular drawn at the water line where uh, the perpendicular drawn to the water line at a point where the aft of the rudder post meets the summer load line is called your is called your aft perpendicular. Okay, so the perpendicular drawn to the water line at the point where the aft of the rudder post meets the summer load line is called your aft perpendicular. Now the perpendicular drawn to the water line at the point where the stem meets the summer load line. This is called your forward perpendicular. Okay. Now the length between half perpendicular and forward perpendicular on the summer load line is called your length between perpendiculars. So this length is the LBP length between perpendiculars length between forward perpendicular and half perpendicular measured at the summer load line then now length when it is taken over all extremities so this length length over all extremities is called the length overall length over all extremities is your length overall Okay, now uh, coming to midship, midship is uh, the center of your length between perpendiculars is called midship. This is the symbol for midship. The formula for midship is LBP by 2.
okay length between perpendiculars divided by 2 is your amidship our next definition is center line of the ship it's an imaginary line drawn uh, from forward to aft uh, passing through midship is your center line okay now facing forward right hand side of a ship is called the starboard side this is the definition for starboard side and facing forward left hand side of a ship is called the port side so our next definition is shear now shear is a very important definition and uh, quite regularly asked by surveyors for second mate orders under function 3 now let's see what this is as we all know this is the ship okay some ships have construction in this way okay now what is shear shear is the curvature of the deck in the longitudinal direction so this this is what shear is it is the curvature of the deck in the longitudinal direction measured between the height of the deck at midship okay this height height of the deck at midship towards the height at the particular point that may be forward or aft okay so this height so once again let us uh, this uh, let us discuss the definition for shear shear is the longitudinal curvature of the deck okay measured from the height at midship the deck's height at midship to the height at a particular point on the deck that can be forward or aft uh, also the important uh, what shear does is shear provides for buoyancy okay it provides for increase in buoyancy so this is the function of shear remember as we have discussed the longitudinal curvature of the ship's deck is called as shear so the transverse curvature of the ship's deck is called as camber the transverse curvature of the ship's deck is called camber it is measured from the sh ship's deck height at the uh, center line of the ship to the sh uh, ship's deck height at the side okay so this is how camber is measured let's revise it once again now camber the definition is as follows it is the transverse curvature of the ship's deck okay measured at a uh, midship uh, from from the height of the deck at the center line of the ship to the uh, height of the deck at the side of the ship either port side or starboard side so this is what camber is what's the function of camber the function of camber as you can see this structure helps in easing out the drainage facility okay it helps to drain the water easily or drain any fluid it helps in drainage easy drainage as well as it provides longitudinal strength to the ship structure our next definition is uh, tumble home now tumble home it is the inward curvature of the ship's uh, side above the summer load line If this is the summer load line now this structure the inward curvature of the ship side shell above the summer load line is called tumble home so this is tumble home it is the inward curvature of the side shell now what is the function of tumble home uh, basically it helps in uh, providing uh, a better uh, ship design as well as uh, it helps in uh, a bit of stability of the ship also as you can see uh, it helps in uprighting uprighting the ship the basic 
what additional stability it adds us in operating the ship okay when the ship is rolling to bring it back to its uh, equilibrium it helps in uh, bringing the back, uh, bringing the ship back to uh, the stable position so our next definition is molded beam now molded beam is the maximum molded breadth which is measured at midship okay so this this is the maximum molded breadth measured at midship is called your molded beam okay so this is the reference line from molded beam okay then this as you can see this structure is the floor now floor what are floors floors bulkheads as we know bulkheads are the vertical divisions of a ship are called bulkheads okay now these bulkheads when they uh, these bulkheads in the double bottom region are called floors okay so this is the double bottom region in the double bottom region floors are present okay so as you can see this is the bulkhead and this is the floor which is present in the double bottom now what is baseline now baseline is the horizontal line which is drawn on top of the keel plate so considering this as the keel plate so this line the line which is drawn from here is your baseline so baseline is the line which is a horizontal line drawn from the top of the keel plate is called your baseline and uh, what is rise of the floor now rise of the floor is as you know this is the floor okay so this is the rise of the floor now rise of the floor is nothing but it is uh, considered between it is calculated between the baseline and the uh, line which is drawn from the molded beam okay the reference line from the molded beam so rise of the floor is the rise of the shell plating above the baseline and it is calculated till the reference line which is your molded beam okay so this is your rise of the floor now what was the function of rise of the floor is that it would assist in drainage itself before bilges were present at the center so it would assist in drainage facility that's what uh, rise of the floor did then comes uh, now keel this is the half side of the keel on the idle side from center of the keel on the starboard side or to the port side the dimensions are called as half side sliding of the keel friends our next topic is flare now flare is something which is opposite to tumble home in tumble home we read that it is it was the inward curvature of the side shell plating now flare is the outward curvature of the side shell plating above the water line present in the forward region of the ship now this this is your flare okay the forward region the outwards curvature of the shell plating in the forward region is called flare now flare what are what is the function of the flare it uh, it provides for increase in buoyancy okay and the increase in buoyancy helps uh, preventing the bow going into the seas that's what your flare helps helps in the second point is that it promotes dryness as you can see the flare it is the outward curvature so it promotes dryness in the forward region so number one was buoyancy helps in increasing the buoyancy so that the bow does not go into the seas then it promotes dryness oh in the forward region number 3 it helps in the anchors to drop clear of the side shell okay so uh anchor it helps in dropping the anchor clear to the side shell and number 4 it provides for a larger uh for deck area in the forward your foxel 
So it provides for a larger deck area in the forward, which is the foxhole. This is what is the function of flare. So moving on to our next definition, which is freeboard. Now freeboard, as you can see over here, is the vertical distance measured from the water line or the summer load line to the freeboard deck. This is your freeboard. Now what is your uh, drafts, your extreme draft and molded draft? Now, molded draft is the draft which is measured from water line or your summer load line to the baseline. This is, remember all the molded dimensions would be from your baseline, okay? And all your extreme dimensions will be from underside of the keel. So molded draft is the draft which is measured from the summer load line or the water line to the baseline of the ship. Now baseline as we all know is the line, horizontal line which is drawn from the top of the keel plate. So this is molded. Molded draft. Okay. Then comes your extreme draft. This draft is your extreme draft. So let's define extreme draft. Extreme draft is the draft which is measured from the water line or your summer load line to the underside of the keel. Then comes your depth. What is the depth? Now here it comes extreme depth as well as molded depth. Now molded depth is measured from baseline for sure. From baseline to the heel of the upper deck beam. So what is the heel of the upper deck beam? Just have a look over here. Considering this as the beams. These are the upper deck beams. So this, this is the heel. This is the heel of the upper deck beam and this is the head of the upper deck beam. Okay. So your extreme depth extreme depth and molded depth Now molded depth is measured from heel of the upper deck beam to the baseline Okay, this baseline to the heel of the upper deck beam is your molded depth. Okay, extreme depth is measured from the extreme edge, this edge, the extreme edge of the freeboard deck to the underside of the keel. This is the extreme depth. Then comes air draft. Now what is air draft? Air draft is the vertical distance which is measured above the water line or the summer load line or whatever draft you have, okay, above the water line to the extreme uh, superstructure which is present on the ship, to the extreme structure. So for consideration, this is the accommodation. This is the extreme structure. Okay, so this is going to be your air draft. Air draft. Now, some of you may ask, was what is the use of air draft? The air draft is used where you are crossing bridges. Okay, the places which have uh, bridge construction uh, for clearance, air draft is used. So that is where you use air draft. So moving on to our next definition, which is uh, shear stake. Now, shear stake, as you can see over here, shear stake is nothing but it is the top stake of the side shell plating where the side shell turns to your deck plating. So this stake is called your shear stake, the topmost stake, shear stake. It is the top stake of the side shell plating, which, uh, for, which connects the deck plating to the side shell. It is where the shear side shell plating turns to deck plating. So this is the shear stake. Now what is opposite of shear stake? 
the lowermost stake of the side shell plating where the bottom shell turns to side shell is called this plating over here this is called turn off bilge this stake over here where the side uh, bottom shell plating turns to side shell the stake present over there is called the turn off bilge the centermost stake of a shell plating is called your keel stringer stake now what is stringer stake is this stake present over here is called the stringer stake stringer stake Stringer stake is nothing but it is the extreme or the sidemost stake of a deck plate. Deck plating is called a uh, stringer stake. This is the deck. The extreme side stake, extreme stake of the uh, deck plating is called the stringer stake. The stringer stake connect, connects to the shear stake. So uh, this is these are all the definitions, uh, the important definitions which which with respect to ship construction.